Hi, I'm John Brownlee with the Billfish Foundation. We're here today to talk about tagging. Billfish tagging has been around since 1954, when the late Frank Mather introduced the Atlantic Game Fish Cooperative Tagging Program at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. These days, the tagging program is administered by the Billfish Foundation. Tagging is fun, it's easy, and more importantly, it connects you with a group of anglers and scientists worldwide who are working together to conserve the stocks of endangered billfish around the world. We hope that we can convince you to be part of that team. All you need to get started are a few things. You need to get some cards like these and the tags that go with them from the Billfish Foundation. These cards are filled out when you catch a fish. You record the, uh, the place and the time where you caught the billfish and also an estimate of the billfish's size and its weight. When the fish is recaptured, scientists go back and compare the new data from the fish to the old data to see how much it has grown, where it's traveled, that sort of thing. And from this, scientists learn a great deal about the migrational patterns of billfish and also the rate at which they grow. You also need a tag stick, of course, like this one available from the Billfish Foundation. A tag is placed at the end of the stick, and then the tag is placed into the back of the billfish after you're ready to release them. And the only other thing you need, of course, is a boat. It's fun, it's easy, and we hope that we're going to convince you to become a tagger if you never have before. We're going to fish today with Captain Ray Rocher on the charter boat, the Miss Brit, out of Miami, Florida. And we hope he can bring you some great action and show you just how much fun tagging can be. Captain Ray Rocher has been charter fishing since 1979. This Miami native has become recognized as one of the top captains in the world when it comes to catching and releasing billfish, especially sailfish and swordfish. Ray, obviously, um, in trying not to do damage to the fish, there are certain procedures you need to follow. Uh, let's take it from start to finish through catching a fish. Once the sailfish or the marlin, the swordfish, whatever it is you're tagging, is on the line and coming to the leader, what do you want to start preparing to do? Believe it or not, uh, one thing that I, I think helps improve the chances of the fish surviving starts with actually how you fight the fish. If you were to hook a fish and quickly back up to that fish and try to tag that fish in the air, there are a handful of guys that are very talented and can, can pull that off. Personally, I think it's very risky and if you're trying to, if your main focus is trying to enjoy the fight and get a good tag in the fish, enjoy the fight. Don't rush the, the capture of the fish. You want that fish under control, calm, and uh, laying by the boat so that you're pretty sure that your shot's going to go where right. the tag is intended to be. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole idea is, is uh, bring the fish to the boat at a time when he's a little more subdued. But one technique that I think makes all of this so much easier is keep the boat moving. When the fish comes up on the leader, you take the boat out of the gear, the fish has to go somewhere. He's always propelling himself forward. If you'll match the speed of the fish as you've got him on the leader, then that fish not only is being allowed to breathe and resuscitate, but he's also giving you a nice perpendicular view, which is what you want to get the tag in. Whoever's going to be responsible for the tagging, whether you have two mates or you have an angler fighting a fish on a wind-on leader, and you can do it with one mate, he can pinch the fish up, let's say he's on the starboard side of the boat with his left hand, and he's got his right hand with the tag stick in position. But then when the fish gets up close enough to tag, he can either choke down on the stick to, to where he controls it, or take two hands quickly and put the tag where it needs to be, right. with the angler holding pressure on the wind on. But the bottom line is don't don't tag across the leader. And the closer one hand is to the, the end of the tag stick, the more control you, you have. You control the head of that yeah. stick and therefore where it's going. And if you have a, a relatively small fish like a sailfish, I mean the difference between tagging him in the top in the meaty part of his back next to the dorsal fin yeah. or tagging him in the guts down below is often only a few inches. When handling fish, that's probably about as extensive as you want to get with handling this. Certainly you don't want to pick them up and drag them over the side Absolutely. like a lot of people do for vanity shots and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's key. You want to leave the fish in the water, keep their heads down, and tag them in a natural swimming motion. Well, the idea is to do as little harm to the fish as possible. I mean, the idea is to, is to is we're trying to save the yeah, fish here, right. not, to, not to vandalize them. So yeah. um, think about it and, and use some common sense and practice this in your technique, and your tagging will be uh, more rewarding and more productive as well. Right. Okay, let's see if we can find one. Nice. Look at that. Look at him go.
left. All right. Twice now Jason's had the fish on the leader and twice we've let it go because we want to do this without billing the fish. We don't want to touch them. We want to do this with as little damage, little contact to the fish as we can. So we're just taking our time, making sure that the time is right and the fish is ready to be tagged. All right, Jason has the leader. I'm gonna bring the fish in gently. Notice the rays matching the speed of the boat to the speed that the fish is swimming. That's important because it doesn't increase the pressure on the fish at all. It shouldn't do any extra damage to the fish's mouth. You ready, Ray? Let's get a tag in this boy. He's good, he's up. Ray, I think he's ready. Nice speed. Excellent placement. Nice job, guys. And that's all there is to it. By taking our time, waiting till the fish was ready, we get proper placement. The fish is in great shape. See how he's moving his tail? He's got good color. He hasn't been out of the water at all. Really no negative impact to the fish at all. Now we're ready to release him. Whenever you're ready, Jay. Off he swims. Okay, excellent job, guys. Jay, good work. Very good, Excellent sir. as always, Captain Thanks. Rocher. Let's review the tagging procedure. The first thing you need to do is make sure the fish is ready to be tagged and is in the right condition. The fish should be held in a suitable position for tagging alongside the boat by holding the leader over the side at the forward end of the cockpit. The boat should be idling forward slowly to maintain this position until the fish is tagged. Never remove the fish from the water. Improper tag placement or tagging too hard can result in serious injury or death to the fish. After tagging, the fish should be released by removing the hook or cutting the leader as close to the hook as possible. Frequently, an exhausted fish can be revived by towing it slowly forward before release. This could take up to 20 to 30 minutes, depending on the length of the fight and many other factors. Make sure the fish is swimming upright and has a strong tail rhythm before letting it go. Obviously, tagging a sailfish is very different from tagging a large marlin, although the theory is the same. With any billfish, it's essential to control the animal before attempting to tag it. Wiring a large blue or black marlin incorrectly can lead to serious injury or even death for the wireman. So use extreme caution and take your time. If you feel comfortable that the fish is firmly under the wireman's control, go for the tag. If you should feel at any time that you are not in complete control, it's better to pass up the tagging opportunity than risk injury to you or the fish. What would you say to somebody about what the benefits are of tagging and uh, also of the use of circle hooks as a conservation measure? Well, it, it seems like um, obviously the tagging helps create data. You know, you're allowing, allowing a fish to be caught, released, and then recaptured maybe in another area. That period of time between tagging incidents allows a lot of research to, to happen. And if you're going to tag fish, it seems like use of circle hooks is a no-brainer. You know, you're going to hopefully get that fish in the corner of the jaw. By using circle hooks and by participating in the tagging program, you sort of feel part of an effort, an ongoing international effort, to promote and conserve billfish stocks. It's a lot of fun, and uh, yeah. it's awful exciting when you get that first uh, yeah. tag return back. Yeah, I've had quite a few fish returned, and it's always rewarding to myself and the, the clients that fish with us to uh, get that information back. And if you're tagging fish as part of a tournament, please practice the responsibility of patience. Take your time and make sure the fish is ready to be tagged. Returning tag recapture information is extremely important. Without it, the scientific loop remains open. Tags placed previously on billfish are not always easy to find. Various forms of marine growth often attach to exposed portions of the tag, making the streamer difficult to recognize. That's why anglers should carefully examine all billfish brought to the boat before tagging and releasing. To re-release the tagged fish, clip the original tag and, if possible, implant a new tag. Record an estimate of the fish's length and weight, as well as the date and location of the recapture. Then call or write the Billfish Foundation with the information. If the card is not filled out completely and legibly and returned to the Billfish Foundation, your efforts will be of no scientific value. We hope you've enjoyed the video. We also hope you'll become part of the TBF tagging team. We'd suggest you watch the video a few times until you get the hang of it. But when you do, you'll become part of a concerned coalition of anglers and scientists working together worldwide to conserve endangered billfish stocks. 
For more information about the Billfish Foundation or Adopt the Billfish, check out www.billfish.org. You can order materials from the Billfish Foundation, including tag flags and tag kits, and that's all you need to get started. For the Billfish Foundation, I'm John Brownlee. Thanks a lot and good fishing.